can you really travel to Antarctica? Imagine there is a large continent the size of North America. 14.2 million square kilometers or 5.5 million square miles, to be exact, according to the mainstream. Now, imagine that no private person, expedition, researcher, traveler, adventurer is allowed to go there. Prohibited. Forbidden. Off limits. Any attempt is met with military force. You'll be shot at. The only way to reach it is through pre-planned tours to a very limited selection of places. At no times is a tourist permitted to venture outside the tight itinerary. At the same time, we are told that there is nothing of interest or value there. Would this strike you as odd? Because it's the truth about Antarctica. You won't learn this from official sources. If you venture to Quora.com, the website that contains answers to almost everything, and ask, can I travel to Antarctica? The consensus is yes, it's no problem. Anyone can travel to Antarctica at any time. At the time of this video, pages upon pages of answers along these lines. Wikipedia and Google agree with this consensus. It's no problem at all. Nobody will be shot at. Don't be paranoid. So, I went to a local travel agency and inquired. I was pleasantly surprised that they had one travel package. It was part of a tour. I asked if I could just book a flight and then wander off on my own. I'm afraid that won't be possible, the travel agent said. Interesting. I just spent the whole morning reading online that it's no problem at all. That's the difference between online reality and real reality. It doesn't matter how much you read online that a thing is real or unreal. What matters is experience. It won't be possible through you or in general, I asked, but she didn't know the answer. Perhaps travel to Antarctica is a little more complicated. Why doesn't a travel agent know how I can travel to the Antarctica? Is it not their job to know how I can get to places? You probably don't want to do that, unless your experience with ice and snow, she finally said. Well, that's at least something. But when you book a trip to northern Siberia, Alaska, or northern Scandinavia, no travel agent will tell you, you probably don't want to do that. They'll simply arrange for your flight tickets. If I were experienced, how and when can I travel? I'd really like to just travel to Antarctica. The lady shuffled around nervously, like she'd never been asked, and was just realizing that she had no idea. She knew of no way, without a tour. No passenger flights were scheduled. Apparently, there are daily cargo flights going from Australia, Argentina, Chile, South Africa, and New Zealand to Antarctica. So reported by people who work at the respective airports. So reported by people who see planes southbound daily. The people of Tasmania or those of Invercargill, the southernmost tip of New Zealand, see airplanes flying south every day. Many of these appear to be military cargo planes, as there is nothing south of Tasmania or New Zealand. Where are these planes headed to? I'm just asking for 8 billion friends. The only thing south of these places is Antarctica. Antarctica is said to be mostly empty, with a few sparsely manned research stations tucked into the snow. But judging by the amount of reported planes flying south, there is much more going on. We'll look at this more closely later. According to an article of the mainstream newspaper newshub.nz, travel to Antarctica is tightly controlled. There is a Norwegian guy who, like me, wished to travel there but not as part of a guided tour. His name is Jarl Andoe, a known adventurer and explorer. In response to one attempt, Andoe was shot at by Chilean ships. On other attempts, he was intercepted by naval vessels from other countries. He has also been arrested, fined, denied entry to various waters, and treated like a criminal for wanting nothing other than to explore the Antarctic and Arctic independently. Several of his crew members have lost their lives. He was denied permission to sail to the Antarctica many times and imprisoned for defying his government's orders not to sail there. But we are told there is nothing to see there and anyone can go there anytime. 5.5 million square miles and nothing to see. If there is really absolutely nothing to see, why are independent explorers denied entry? Why is violent force used to prevent entry to a country of which it is claimed that no visas are required to enter? This is the first response that appears on Google search of whether it is illegal to go to the Antarctica. It's a response on Quora.com. Pause the video if you need to. 
This and hundreds of other answers and articles make it appear as if nothing is stopping you from going there. And of course, there's often the warning that if you do go, it may be met with tragedy as with so many others who try. How about that? You can go anytime, but it may be met with tragedy. The answer in the screenshot represents so many. The author of the entry repeats the myth that you can go there anytime you like and you could book a flight there. Jarl Andoe has the authorities worried. Chile reports he had been arrested and New Zealand says he hadn't been arrested. Apparently, they couldn't agree on a common narrative. One of the official stories has to be false. Why the need to lie? Perhaps to maintain the illusion that anyone can travel to Antarctica. It's not true. Antarctica cannot be freely accessed. And the 8 billion people populating this world were not even asked in the matter. Do you remember receiving a questionnaire that asked your opinion on Antarctic matters? No, I didn't think so. Have any of you consented to Antarctica being prohibited territory? If Antarctica is not owned or claimed by any country, how can it be illegal to go there? Popular websites on polar expeditions routinely lie about this. Consider the following from a polar cruise operator, randomly pulled up on the internet. Since no country owns Antarctica, no visa is required to travel there. If you are a citizen of a country that is a signatory of the Antarctic Treaty, you do need to get permission to travel to Antarctica. This is nearly always done through tour operators. If you're going on your own, you will most likely be asked to register your intended visit, list your travel plans and possible environmental impact, and agree to follow the regulations of the treaty. If you come from a country that is not a signatory, you are not required to get a permit, but the ports that you leave from may insist that you have some sort of permission before you go. Why do you need to get permission in the first place? Well, that is because visiting Antarctica is a privilege and a responsibility at the same time. The Antarctic Treaty includes a protocol on environmental protection, which designates the continent as a natural reserve. There is a set of rules any visitor has to follow. The lie is you are not required to get a permit, which is contradicted in the same sentence. But the ports that you leave from may insist that you have some sort of permission before you go. In hours of search, I found no evidence that anyone who tried entering the Southland without permission succeeded. There appear to be naval vessels from several countries patrolling Antarctica for the purpose of surveying the ocean and preventing illegal fishing. Could preventing illegal fishing be a guise through which to keep people out? The few who have access are also tightly restricted. Parties to the Antarctic Treaty have agreed to restrict human access to 16 areas of special scientific or environmental value in Antarctica. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. I've split this into two or three parts because it was too long and I didn't want to take up too much of your time. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part two.